Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start. So I'm going to set the timer over here on my end. For your sake, do you want to be able to hear the timer or do you want me to just tell you when we're coming out? Yeah, no opinion. Okay, so I'll just hear the timer and I'll tell you when we're coming out. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start the timer now. And again, in the first three minutes, are yours. So I encourage you to do whatever feels good to you. That might be some gentle twists. That might be just sitting. That might be some cats and some cows. But you're going to just take the first few moments to check in with your body. And as I was practicing this morning, this particular sequence, I found it very interesting to notice just how I can start to tap in, how I can start to listen, how I can start to just become aware of what's present, what's alive, what's active, what's alert in me. So last week I taught about Vata and I received a question asking about Vata. Um, specifically Vata is this air and ether element. Um, it's typical as we get older to enter the Vata stage of life. Fall and winter are considered more Vata time periods. And so when we enter into this state of life, state of season, state of being, what's typical is that there are a lot of things that are moving, but we want to allow ourselves to come into a state of connection come into a state of grounding. So you have about another minute and a half. So I encourage you to just notice if there's anything else you're hoping to do or explore. And again, you're just checking in. How are you? How is your body? How is your breath? And as you take these last few moments to just do any last little minute things, you're again just checking in. And when you feel like you are complete with your little morning explorations, you'll start to make your way up to a tabletop position. And you've got about another 10 seconds or so, so there's no rush. Great. From tabletop, we're gonna start in child's pose. And you have the option to use both of your blocks underneath your elbows or to keep your arms just straight, but you'll draw your big toes together. Your knees are underneath your hips, and then you'll start to press your butt back towards your heels. And then from there, you might walk the blocks in and plant one elbow on one block, one elbow on the other, and then crawl your elbows forward on the blocks if you need to. You can press the palms into each other, allow the head to start to drop between the gates of your arms, and then you'll just take a moment to just settle in there and notice how that feels. If the arms are straight, just go ahead and press into the tips of the fingertips, lift the heels of the hands away from the floor. And everyone lift your armpits up and away from the floor as you wrap the triceps down. Now, as we're here for this next minute or so, I'd like you to just notice if you can starts to find the breath. And you might do that by just taking a few audible exhales out of the mouth, just feeling what it feels like to release the breath.
And then very gently after this next audible exhalation, start to tone the back of your throat, close your lips and invite in your ujjayi pranayama. Now for today in particular, I'd like you to focus again on the exhalation. So every time you exhale, the belly draws in and up, the low back widens. Every time you inhale, see if you can breathe into the upper armpits, the upper collarbones, the upper ribs. Every exhale, low belly draws in. So one of the places that we can really ground ourselves with our vata energy as it's moving around within us is in our abdomen. So the colon is where it lives. And so when it's a little unstable, it can cause low back pain. It can cause digestive issues. It can cause a sense of ungroundedness and flightiness in the mind. And so you're gonna just take these next two to three breath cycles to really anchor your awareness every time you exhale in the abdomen. And every time you inhale, you're just creating a little bit more length in the upper spine. And you've got about three or four more breath cycles here, depending upon how you're breathing. Nice work. On your next in-breath, start to lift your head, shift your weight forward and release your hands down to the floor. Come back to a tabletop position. Go ahead and remove those blocks off to the upper corners of your mat. And you might wanna take a gentle cat and cow here before we go to downward facing dog. But again, the impetus is always on just observing what's happening right here, right now how you're responding. Awesome sauce. The next time you come into your cow shape pose, go ahead and stay there. Walk your hands forward about one to two inches. Tuck your toes under, lift up through your armpits like they're little balloons floating your armpits up and then start to lift your hips up and back downward facing dog. Keep your knees really bent for this first minute here. And I want you to imagine that your armpits are still lifting up towards your ears. Your ears are falling in line with your arms. Your bum is lifting up and you're pushing your shoulder blades down and forward into your hands. You're lifting your hips up and away from your shoulders. And then again, let's start to find that breath. Can you breathe into the upper collarbones, the armpits, the ribs? And then the exhale is stabilizing the sacrum stabilizing the low belly. And as we're here for this next minute and a half, you might choose to keep both knees very generously bent. You might choose to straighten both legs, reaching your heels towards the wall behind you and maybe towards the floor beneath you. And for today, what I'd like you to do is instead of forcing yourself to be still, I'd like you to set the intention to be very still and just notice when the body involuntarily moves. So again, the breath is calm, the breath is steady, and you're just observing when the body wants to move. You're not forcing it to move or forcing it not to move, but just observe the rise and the fall of sensation. And as always, I encourage you to notice what your breath is doing. So that breath is the anchor, the inhale fills the upper collarbones, the upper ribs, the armpits, the exhale draws the pubic bone towards the belly button, the belly button towards the spine. And again, as sensation builds, can you continue to just observe and watch it? We've got about four more steady breath cycles here. Notice what the sound of the breath feels like. Notice what the sound of the breath sounds like.
At the end of your next exhalation, generously bend your knees and start to walk your feet towards your face. When you get to the top of your space, separate the feet about hip distance apart, grab one of those blocks and slide it between your shin bones in the first or the second setting. And then I encourage you to bend the knees as much as you need to for your head to be heavy. And then you're just gonna notice the sensations here. So again, where is the breath? Can the exhale really be rooted in the abdomen in the navel center? Can you notice the weight in your feet? Can you notice the amount of engagement that your legs have around that block? And then again, it's just noticing, where can you soften? One of the things I find very fascinating about this practice is that it's really helpful in terms of helping us learn to soften in situations where over-efforting isn't really going to help us. And so our practice in this moment is helping us for those situations where it might be at work, might be in our relationships, it might even be with regards to our health. We've got three more steady breath cycles here. And I want you to notice where you can soften, even as you stay active, even as you stay aware, where can you let go of any unnecessary tension? Awesome. At the end of your next exhalation, if the hands are anywhere but to the floor, can you release them down to the floor? Then we'll slide our hands up the fronts of our shins and lift our spine parallel-ish to the floor. Now to make sure the spine is parallel, bend your knees as much as you need to. Blossom your buttocks back behind you. Pubic bone reaches back, tailbone reaches back, sit bones widen apart and start to push your shin bones forward into your fingertips. Start to push your fingertips back into your shin bones. Start to squeeze your legs around your block. And then notice if you can draw the shoulders away from the ears and towards the spine, knee up, and let your heart and sternum reach forward. And so we'll be here for about another 30 seconds or so. And you'll just breathe here, allowing your head to come out of your little turtle shell just a bit more. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're pausing and you're breathing. You're noticing sensation as it rises and sensation as it dissipates. We've got about two more breath cycles here. Continue to draw that exhale in, drawing the belly into the spine every time you exhale. Awesome sauce. As you inhale, bring your hands to your heart center. As you exhale, bend your knees and bring your spine up to vertical to sit for chair pose. Awesome. Now from here in chair, you can choose to stay here with hands at heart center. You can reach your hands forward like little zombies. You can reach your arms up and alongside your ears in this victorious position. But I want you to choose a position that allows you to be alert and yet effortless. So you'll just stay there. I know that sounds like a paradox. You want me to be effortless and chair. And yes, I do. How can you soften? Where do you not need engagement? So you can continue to hug that block. You can continue to sit your pelvis towards the floor. But you don't need effort around your face. You can let effort go there. You can notice that the breath can become smoother and steadier and calmer. The gaze can be fixed on one point. And again, you're just noticing sensation as it rises. You don't need to engage in it. You don't need to force it to stop. You're just noticing when it wants to arise. And you're breathing. What is the quality of your breath now? Can you even out the breath?
And as shaking starts to come up, this is one thing I did learn this week from my teacher that I thought was very funny. So he says Vata is very much involved with um, the movement of energy. So the shaking that you may experience from time to time is Vata coming to the surface. And he says we need a certain amount of that in order to release it, but we don't want so much that we burn it out. So you've got your last three breath cycles here. And you're just noticing on your next inhalation, you'll go ahead and stand up, reach up, look up. And you can keep your arms up and over your head or lower them alongside you, but you're gonna stay here for a minute. And you're just gonna pause and you're gonna breathe as best as you can. Can you be still? Can you notice the sensation in your feet? Can you notice the change in your breath? Vatas are good at movement. They're good at being creative, coming up with ideas, doing a bazillion different things. But the stamina is often quickly diminished if we don't take a moment to ground, if we don't take a moment to settle and be present in this moment. Right. At the end of your next exhale, you'll release that block. I encourage you to make sure both blocks are towards the top corners of your space. And then you'll just simply bend over at your hips, put your hands on your blocks and step your left foot long and back. So with your hands on your blocks, your left foot reaching back, you're going to pause here for a moment and just see what your low lunge position feels like. From here, let's spin that left foot completely to the floor and bring your right hand or to the inside edge of your right foot. Bring your left hand to your left hip. First things first, let's press our big toe mound of the front foot into the floor. Let's widen the front knee out so it centers over the center of the front foot and press down into your left pinky toe. From there, you might start to press the right arm into the right thigh and rotate your ribs towards the left, stacking perhaps left shoulder on top of right. From here, you can reach that left arm back alongside your hip and then pizza slice it across the horizon until it's over your head. Awesome. With the arm perhaps over your ear, palm faces down. I want you to notice if you can just find a steady point for your gaze. And you'll just see if you can breathe. Now in this shape, more than perhaps any of the other ones, you might feel a lot of activation happening in your legs. You might even feel it in your inner thighs, particularly with that arm on the inside. So one of the other areas that Vata tends to live in the body is our inner thighs, our pelvis, and our colon area. So as you're breathing here, I'd like you to, again, just observe sensation as it rises. Observe the tendency to want to fidget around, maybe in the feet or in the arms or in the fingers. And you're not attempting to force it to be still necessarily. You're just seeing if you can observe it. How is the breath? Where can you deepen the breath? We've got about three more breath cycles here. Keep the legs active, keep the face soft and the heart open. At the end of your next exhalation, Go ahead and lower that left arm to the floor. Come back to a low lunge with the right leg forward. Pause here, either hands on blocks or hands on the floor. You're going to step your front leg back for plank pose. And we're just gonna stay here for about 30 seconds. This isn't our long big tamale yet. And we're just gonna stay here and you're gonna pause and you're gonna breathe. Your sternum reaches forward, your tailbone reaches back, yep, and your inner thighs lift up. 
and you're just pausing and you're breathing, you're noticing sensation. Great. We got two more breath cycles here. At the end of your next exhalation, you'll step your left foot forward. And so then we'll pause here in a low lunge, bending into that left knee, reaching back through the inner right thigh. Notice how this side feels different having just done plank. And then when you're ready, your left hand will come to the inside edge of your left foot. Your right foot will spin towards the floor. And then your right hand will come to your right hip. Take a moment to pause here. Draw that outer left hip straight back. Press your right pinky toe down into the floor. And then see if you can stack that right shoulder on top of the left. Extend back through your right arm, palm faces down. And then as though you're sweeping along the horizon, pizza slice that right arm alongside your ear. Palm faces down and pick a place for your gaze that is able, that is easy in the neck, that you're able to keep your heart open and then breathe long along your right side body. And I want you to notice the difference in how it is to breathe here. So you might have found with your left side on top, your left arm up, it was harder to breathe than it might be on this side. And that's probably because you have three lobes of your lungs on this side and only two on the other. So just notice that. Paying attention to the sensation, keeping the legs active and noticing your breath. And again, you're just trying to remain still, not trying to force anything, but Noticing when the habit or the tendency to fidget comes up. See if you can observe that while remaining still. We've got another four breath cycles. Awesome, sauce. At the end of your next exhalation, draw that right hand to the floor, pivot to a low lunge, bring both of your hands to your blocks. Start to walk your hands and your blocks over to your right and come into Prasarda Padatanasana. So wide-legged forward fold facing the long edge of your mat. You're gonna walk all the way to your right, turn both feet so they're parallel to the short edges of your mat. And if you find that your hamstrings are pretty open, I want you to walk your feet closer towards each other. If it feels like your hammies are a little tighter, you can keep them as they are. And then everyone start to press onto the knife edges of your pinky toes and the knife edges of your feet. Reach your heart and sternum forward on a diagonal almost. And then you'll start to melt your heart through the gates of your legs. And you can release the blocks if you'd like. You can put your forearms on the blocks. You can put your head on the blocks, but they're there for you. And you'll notice what you notice here. Erica, see if your heart can melt a little bit more towards your legs. Yep. And just let your head be easy. Let your head be heavy. And for my hypermobile people, you want to encourage the quadriceps to pull up and the sit bones, there you go, Jenny, to be over the pelvis. Instead of being back behind, you want it to be over the pelvis. You've got about another minute or so here and you're just pausing and you're breathing. You're noticing the sensations. Take your last three breath cycles here.
Great job. At the end of your next exhalation, you'll gently release the hands to the floor if they're not already there. And then inhale, lift the spine halfway. Hands onto your blocks and you'll walk to face the top of your space, low lunge. Pause here. You can plant your hands on the mat. You'll step your front leg back and we'll find ourselves in plank round two. So you can be in a forearm plank for this. You can be in standard regular plank for this, but we're gonna make sure that our armpits are lifting up and away from the floor. Our inner thighs are lifting up and away from the floor. Our tailbone is in line with our shoulders. So lower your pelvis just a little bit, some of you. And then you're gonna draw your pubic bone towards your belly button, your belly button back towards the spine. Lift the back of the head, lift the back of the heart. Heat up, and you're gonna pause and you're gonna breathe. And then the sensation builds here, it's probably gonna come pretty quickly. So I want you to notice it, noticing where you can still continue to soften. So maybe your face doesn't need to grimace as you press your appendages down into the floor. Maybe you don't need to hold your breath as you engage the low belly to stabilize the spine. Maybe you don't need to hold your breath as you lightly engage the glutes and the inner thighs. And since we've got about another minute or so here, if you need to take a momentary reprieve and lower the knees down, by all means do that. And then you can join back in when you're ready. So one of the fun things that I've been exploring with Vata through my own practice is that we don't wanna burn it out. I said that a little bit before today, but we wanna give it the opportunity for it to join back in. So we've got another 30 seconds on the clock for those of you that are there. And yet the interesting thing is that we're not all one thing. So most of us are mixed with different things. So we'll have our vatas and our pittas and our kapas. So pittas are the fiery elements. Those of us that are like, love our intensity, probably very pitta. Those of us that are kappa, they have a lot of stability, a lot of strength. We need the last two breath cycles here. And then at the end of your, ex, your second exhalation, you'll just lower all the way down onto your belly and pause, bring an ear to the mat and just breathe. Ear to the mat and just breathe. Switch ears on mat. Awesome sauce. Okay, let's bring our forehead on top of our hands. So stack your hands underneath your forehead, heads up, seven up style. And we're just gonna do this to stabilize our sacrum before we go any further. So when you're ready, start to energize your leg, lifting up through the inner thighs, press down into the tops of your big toes and lengthen your tailbone back. Draw your low belly in. And on your next in breath, you'll reach your toes so far back that they flow up and away from the floor. Awesome. As you exhale, start to hug the inner legs towards one another. And then inhale, open the legs as far apart as you want to. And exhale, hug them in. And you've got eight of these. So you'll just inhale and open the legs as wide as you want. And exhale, hug them in. And you're wanting to make sure that you're engaging the front of your leg and the back of your leg evenly. So quadriceps on the front, straightening that leg hammies and glutes on the back to lift the leg. Awesome, sauce. And then after you've done eight, you'll hold the legs towards each other and you'll stay there for about three breath cycles, lifting the inner thighs up, lengthening your tailbone, back, lifting the inner legs away from the floor as much as you can. You've got three, you've got two, you've got one, lower the legs down. 
Nice work. Take a moment to pause and a moment to breathe. And then we'll go ahead and do the next set. So bring your hands alongside your lowest ribs. Press down into your five fingers on each hand. Hug the elbows towards each other. Lightly push down through the hands and pull your sternum forward a smidge. Lift the ears in line with the tops of your shoulders. And then on your next in breath, reach so far back through the toes that they float up and away from the floor. As you exhale, keep lengthening your tailbone back and drawing the pubic bone to the belly button, belly button to spine. And we're gonna stay here. And you're just gonna breathe. And again, we're focusing on stabilizing around that navel center. So the exhale draws the low belly in. The inhale breathes into the collarbones, into the armpits. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what you notice, the sensation comes and the sensation goes. Shoulder blades hug onto the back body, elbows squeeze towards each other and little armpits are coming forward like you got suspenders on the fronts of your inner armpits. Got about four more breath cycles here. You all are doing really great. Nice work. At the end of your next exhalation, gently release down and pause. And just breathe. Notice what you notice. How often when you're feeling anxious, do you allow yourself the moment to just stop, to connect, to notice that, hey, I'm feeling anxious, or I'm feeling overwhelmed, or I'm feeling stressed, or I'm not feeling supported? How often do you allow yourself to just take that moment to connect to that reality of your life at that moment? And in the rare instances that you do, what do you notice shifts? What do you notice happens when you do that? Draw the other ear to the mat. And I can't speak for any of you, but my teacher says that most of us that are drawn to an asana practice are very vata deranged. Um, so we all share this tendency according to him. All right, we're gonna move on. So I want you to come up to forearms and knees. And you can choose to interlace your hands if you'd like. You can choose to keep your hands in a number 11 shape. You can choose to just press the palms towards each other, but I want you to walk your elbows in so they're slightly closer together. Push down onto the skin of your arms and then push the arms wide and then round through your spine a lot. We're gonna stay here for just a bit. And so you're pushing down to the arms, you're widening into the upper back, you're finding a nice stretch in the back of your thoracic spine as you're pushing down into those elbows, lifting your inner armpits, and really feeling how the inner armpits can lift. If this is working for you as a shape, by all means, stay here. Next option is to either lift your hips up to the sky for a dolphin or to step your feet back for forearm plank but you're gonna choose the option that allows you to notice the sensations. And my people that are working in dolphin, you're lifting your inner armpits up, you're pushing the forearms down, yep, there you go, Sandy, and you're lifting your hips high. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what you notice. And this one we're not gonna hold as long. And if you feel any of that energy coming up, that's good, just observe it. And we've got about four more breath cycles. And at the end of your fourth exhalation, you'll release from whichever variation of dolphin that you're in, and you'll come to child's pose.
And once you do release back to child's pose, this variation, arms swim back behind you. And you just take a moment to check in. How is the breath feeling in the body now? What small little sensations do you observe, even in this shape unfolding in the body? Awesome, sauce. At the end of your next exhalation, let's go ahead and bring our hands underneath our shoulders and bring our spine up to a vertical shape. Okay, so now you either have pigeon on your back or pigeon coming forward. So you choose whichever one you want. So you're either gonna do pigeon on your back or you're gonna do pigeon coming forward. And if you usually do pigeon coming forward, I encourage you to try what it feels like on your back. The legs will still be straight. Well, one leg will be straight and the other leg will be bent. And then you're just gonna pause and you're gonna breathe. And my friends that are doing pigeon on the back, you'll notice that you can take that as Suki Randrasana with that opposite knee bent, or you can extend that leg long on the floor beneath you and just hold on to the bent knee heel. It's a weird variation, but it gives you a nice sensation across the sacrum and the outer hip. Yep, there you go, Laura. And wherever you happen to be, you're just pausing and you're breathing. You're noticing what you notice. Where's your breath? Where can you just soften and let go just a little bit? We've got two more breath cycles here. And at the end of your next exhalation, I encourage you to come to a shape that's symmetrical. So if you're in standard pigeon, you might go back to down dog. If you're on your back, you might just lay flat on your back. You might take a happy baby. You choose something that's symmetrical and you're gonna stay there for just a minute. Love the variations, guys. And you're just gonna pause there and you're gonna breathe. You're gonna see how still you can be and how much you can notice things as they move on their own. So this type of practice is called a Laya practice. It's called a dissolution practice, a dissolving practice. There are different types of practices, but this one's supposed to help things unwind. And one of the things that's interesting about letting things unwind is that we notice that all the effort that we exert in things isn't always necessary. We don't always have to put so much relation, so much effort in our relationships, in our jobs, in even our own health and well being. Sometimes we have to learn to let go. Okay, when you're ready, you're going to take the other side. So if you're doing standard pigeon, your other shin will now come forward. And if you're on your back, you'll switch sides. And I want you to all check in. So some of you started with your right leg going forward. Some of you started with your left leg going forward. I want you to just observe the energetic impact of that. So typically we start with our right leg because it's supposed to be our more active, energizing solar side. 
But if you start with your left leg, it's supposed to be more calming and grounding. So some of you that are now on your right side, notice how you're feeling. Those of you that are now on your left side, notice how you're feeling. And wherever you are, can you just stay connected to the sensation? We need movement for change and growth to happen. So we don't always need to attempt to have over activity. These types of practices sometimes can be very hard for those of us that are very strong in our vata predominance um, because it can feel uncomfortable, it can feel agitating, it can feel stifling. Um, but in terms of long-term health of balancing the doshas, because a dosha really just means something that's out of balance. So vata, pitta, kappa are just different descriptions of how we can be in balance um, in order to bring vata so that movement quality back into balance we have to slow it down just a little bit we've got about three more breath cycles here And then at the end of your third exhalation, you're gonna make your way to a symmetrical pose. Those of you that are on your back, I encourage you to stay on your back. Those of you that are sitting up will eventually make our way onto our backs. So you want your symmetrical pose to be up, you do that. If you want your symmetrical pose to be down, you do that too, but we're all gonna eventually make our way onto our backs. Great. My friends and down dog, please make your way onto your backs. And then make sure you have a block somewhere easily accessible to you. And then once you're on your back, let's bend both knees and plant our feet firmly on the floor. Grab your block and place it between your thigh bones on first or second setting, whatever allows your thighs to remain in alignment with your hip sockets. And today for this first bridge that we come into, I don't want you to go to your highest. I want you to see if you can make one diagonal from your hips or from your knees to your hips to your shoulders. So when you're ready, you'll squeeze your block, you'll lift your hips and you're aiming for a diagonal. So not so much of a back bend, but just a diagonal. And once you get to that spot, you might choose to just leave the arms alongside the torso. You might choose to interlace them. You might choose to do any other variation, but our focus right now is on our hips and our glutes. And so having that diagonal line, I want you to squeeze that block for dear life, press down into your heels, press down into your big toes, and think of dragging your heels back towards your face and lengthening your tailbone forward towards your knees. And so we're trying to see if we can get our glutes to engage in the back. So you might find that you wanna even squeeze your butt cheeks together just a little bit to see if that does anything for you. Okay. Now, depending upon how this is feeling, you might choose to stay here or you might choose to lift your hips a little higher. If the arms are floating off the floor, release them to the floor and you might interlace the hands or bend the elbows. And again, we're still squeezing that block 
We're pressing into the big toe mounds. We're lifting our outer hips up. Now with the hips a little higher, your sternum can now come towards your chin. Draw your chin slightly towards the sternum and keep just the back center of the skull pushing down into the floor. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what you're noticing. We've got two more breath cycles here. At the end of your next exhalation, if the hands are clasped, please release them. Draw your pelvis back down to the floor and pause with your feet on the floor for a moment. And you just want to notice the energy moving around. Okay. Next shape. Now just push through your feet, you'll lift your hips high and you'll slide one end or both blocks underneath your sacrum. And you want it to be at a spot where it feels like you can have support underneath your sacrum, like you're an elf on a shelf. And then you can stay here or reach one leg up and then the other leg up. And we're gonna stay here for three minutes. So I encourage you to make sure that you are comfortable wherever you are. So if you need to come down and readjust, by all means, come down and readjust. And then once your legs are up and your pelvis feels like it's in a good spot, bring your hands so it feels like the collarbones can open. So some of you will just turn your palms to face up. Some of you will spin the arms out to the right and to the left. Some of you may feel that for stability's sake, you need to hold on to that block underneath your bum. But you're gonna choose the place where the heart can be open, the legs can be lifted. And from here, let's see if we can engage the kneecaps. So the kneecaps pulled down towards your pelvis. You press up through the balls of the feet, the heels of the feet, the big toe mounds and pinky toe mounds. And then you're going to notice if you can breathe here. Now, possibly some audible exhales will be nice for you. Possibly you'll want to stay with that ujjayi. Now, the other thing to note is, you know, if you have a lot of fata in you or you've been feeling very anxious or stressed or overwhelmed or burnt out or fatigued or any of those things, if you've been feeling those things lately, what you want to focus on in your breathing is trying to make it even. So the inhalation and the exhalation equal. While heavy exhalations can feel really nice, if we do too many of them, they really do exasperate vata. And again, that's just because it increases the prana, the air that's in the body and vata's air and space. And so we need to ground that and contain that and heat that. And just a basic samavritti contains it. A basic samavritti heats it. So then it helps with that anxiety. So as you're here, you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're trying to be as consistent with that breath as you can be. We've got one more minute. And you're trying to just remain still. So you're noticing fidgets when they come up. Not trying to suppress them, but you're just trying to be the witness and observe them. We've got three more breath cycles here. If 
the end of your next exhalation, very gently bend your knees, plant one foot on the floor and then the other. Pause here for a moment. And just stay with your pelvis on the block. Now before we attempt to lift the pelvis up, lightly squeeze your butt cheeks, push down into your feet, lift your hips up and away from the floor, remove the block and lower the pelvis down. Okay. Let's go ahead and open our arms out to the right and to the left, giant T shape. And you are going to take the supine twist of your choice. So if your IT bands are tight, you can do that one. If you want a gentle twist of both legs going one way, you do that. If you want one leg long and straight, you do that. You all have been practicing well enough to know what your twist variation of choice is. And you're gonna pause. And I want you to notice, did your legs go to the right? Did your legs go to the left? If the legs went to the left, this is helping to open up your ascending colon. So it'll help you with digestion and things. If your legs went to the right, this is helping with the descending colon and this is gonna help you learn to breathe a little bit more. So legs going to the left is more of a physical thing. Legs going to the right is more of an energetic thing. And so you're just noticing what you're noticing here. How can you breathe a little bit more? We've got about two more breath cycles here. At the end of your next exhalation, you'll gently come back up through center. Release both feet onto the floor and just pause for a moment before you switch sides. And you just wanna check in and see what you see. As you're ready, you'll switch sides. And so the legs will go to the opposite direction. And as you settle in on this side, can you just observe what your own tendency is? How often do you allow yourself to relax? How often do you allow yourself to be still? For some of us being busy is a habit. Um, it allows us to feel like we're in control, but it also depletes us. And so just observe what your relationship is with being in this moment, being pretty still and just connecting to the sensations that are present. We've got about three more breath cycles here. At the end of your third exhalation, you'll gently come back onto your back. Last little shape here. Draw your knees into your chest. Just feel the squeeze of your thighs into your chest. Noticing what it feels like to try to breathe into the belly and the low back here. And this is a bit of compression. If this is feeling awesome to you, by all means, stay here. Otherwise, bring your hands to the inside edges of your thighs, grab the outside edges of your feet, and press the soles of your feet towards each other. No happy baby just yet. Yeah. And I want you to see if you can really press your pinky toes into each other, the big toes into each other. Pull your heels towards your navel and widen across your inner thighs. 
And so just notice the tightness or sensation or whatever you might be noticing across the inner edges of those thighs. If this is an interesting experience for you. You'll continue to stay here for the next minute. Otherwise you might take happy baby, keeping your pelvis as rooted as it is right now and continuing to breathe into the pelvic region. One of the fun things about both of these shapes is really it's interesting how tight we can get in our inner thighs and not even notice it. And again, that's an indication that our vata is very imbalanced. So it's just pausing and you're breathing. And then at the end of your next exhalation, so gently release that. And I encourage you to notice if there are any final shapes or shape you would like to explore before we settle in for a final resting pose. And so you've got about a minute to do whatever the heck you happen to be doing. We're gently moving towards stillness though. So I encourage you to do things that will help you wind down. Andy, lift more through your inner armpits and push down. Okay. And so those of you that are ready, you'll start to make your way to your final resting pose, whether that's Shavasana or Sutta Konasana. We do encourage you to set yourself up in such a way that you feel warm and in such a way that you feel supported. So if that means that you want to physically cover the body with clothing or blankets, if that means you want to physically support the body with blocks or blankets or bolsters, or little humans, then we do that. Okay. And the first thing that we'll do is I want you to first notice the weight of the body. So once you're settled in, notice if it feels like your right and your left ankle and heel are equally rooting down into the floor and adjust if they're not. Check in with the pelvis and notice if it's equally rooted right to left and adjust if it's not. If the arms are on the body, let them be in such a place that the elbows rest into the floor and you're not having to hold them there. If the arms are off the body, can they be off the body in such a way that the shoulder blades not only slide down the back, but sort of lift the heart up. And then from there, bring your awareness to the jaw. See if you can unclench any unnecessary tension there so that there might be a bit of space between your top and bottom teeth. Relaxing the tongue in the mouth. Pressing down through the center of the skull. So if you need to lift your head to adjust so the center of the skull pushes down and back. Soften the eyes in the sockets, the skin across the forehead. Now for today, we're gonna work again with a similar breath to what we did last week. So I want you to just start to 
deepen your inhalation and deepen your exhalation. And as you deepen it, the first thing that we're gonna pay attention to is how loud the breath is. So can it be about 10% quieter than what it is now? Still loud enough for you to hear it, but 10% quieter than it is now. And as you continue to deepen this connection to the in-breath and the out-breath, the breath has become a little bit quieter. Can you now make it a little bit smoother? So now the inhalation is seamless from the beginning to the end. There are no jumps, there are no bumps. The rate of breath coming in is consistent from the beginning to the end of the inhalation. You might naturally start to notice that as you quiet the breath, as you start to even out the inhalation, the exhalation goes along for the ride. So now, bringing your awareness to the exhale. Can it be smooth and seamless as well? Great. And so as we continue to work on this, we're finding what my teacher calls pure breathing. So the inhalation and the exhalation now have sort of a sense of equanimity between them. They have a sense of ease to them where they're consistent from beginning to end. The breath is perhaps a little bit quieter now. And now as we go into this next step, I want you to continue to keep things soft, to continue to keep things effortless, even though you're shaping it. It's an easy shaping, not a forceful shaping. So I want you to notice how we can start to extend the length of the exhalation. So if your inhale is about four or five counts, see if we can make that exhale about six or seven counts. And you'll notice if you attempted to extend the exhale too long for you at this moment in time, because the next in-breath becomes rushed, it becomes hurried, it becomes jagged in some type of way. So we're using that as a barometer to notice if we're applying too much effort. I and mean, then if that's the case, no worries, we just back off just a little bit. And you'll continue to work this way until you can find that the breath gets to a one to two ratio, meaning if your inhalation is four counts, your exhalation will be about eight counts. Or if your inhalation is five counts, your exhalation will be 10 counts. And again, a longer breath isn't more important than the breath being effortless and the breath being easy. Right. Continue to work with this. If this is calming and nurturing to your ner nervous system, stay with this one to two ratio. 
Otherwise, you might start to insert a slight pause after exhalation for one or two counts. And again, your inhalation is the barometer. If the inhalation becomes jagged or short or rushed or hurried or harried in any type of way, no worries. You just notice that and you back off just a bit. So what that might look like is the inhalation might be four counts, the exhalation might be eight counts, the pause might be two counts. Might look like inhalation five counts, exhalation 10 counts, pause two counts. And all the while, you're just observing things. You're marrying your mind to your breath. Giving it a task. At the end of your next exhalation, gently let go of attempting to control the breath. And just allow yourself to continue to fall into those points of stillness where the breath seems to effortlessly stop. And you'll stay here for a little bit on your own. And I'll let you know when it's time to come out. Gently return your awareness. And just take a moment to check in. Notice what you notice. If there's any part of you that longs to linger here, by all means, please hang out here. When you are ready to reawaken, invite small, gentle movement into the physical form. And then eventually that movement might become some yawns, some wiggles, some stretches. So 
Those in stillness, stay as long as you'd like. Those in movement, you'll gently make your way to your right side. From here, start to roll your chest more towards the floor and press into your left hand and bring your spine up to vertical. When you're vertical, I encourage you to take a moment to sit on a block, on a blanket, anything that will let you sit tall and sit well. And then you'll notice what it feels like to really stack your ears over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips, to find broadness through the collarbones. And then soften any tension in the face, in the mouth, and in the eyes. I think these types of practices are interesting if only because they help us learn that there are very few places where we have to effort as much as we do. The more we can just sort of allow ourselves to trust that who we are as we are is enough, that us doing our best is more than enough. We can start to observe those places where we might be moving just to move, fidgeting just to fidget, efforting just to effort. Go ahead and bring your left hand and rest it on your heart. Back your right hand on top of the left and just take three breath cycles here. And you're just breathing and connecting with that part of you that is always that still awareness. It loves you even as it watches you do things that you don't need to be doing. Okay, we'll go ahead and complete our practice with a collective breath, followed by a collective om. Bring your palms to touch. Press them into each other and receive the weight of your thumbs into your sternum as you lift your heart towards your thumbs. And then you'll lightly just retract the chin towards the throat. Gently exhale all the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in. Audible breath out. Inhale for Om. Join if you'd like. To that light, to that breath, and to that sound, we bow. Namaste.